in the perspective of uh, contemporary halakhic Judaism, being Jewish is like being pregnant. You either are or you're not. There's no such thing as being a little bit pregnant. And from the perspective of halakhic Judaism as it exists now, there's no such thing as being sort of Jewish or partially Jewish. You either are all Jewish or not Jewish. So that for example, uh, if someone says that I am half Jewish, and you say, well, what? why are you half Jewish? Well, I only had one Jewish parent. If your Jewish parent was your mother, then you're all Jewish, according to Allah. If your Jewish parent was only your father, then you are not Jewish, even though you have some connection, of course, to the, to the Jewish people. The reason I mention that is that actually this is something that's not so contemporary. The 14th century great halakhist Rabbi Menachem Amir, he said, Ain Yisrael Hatzain. There's no such thing as being half Jewish. You either are or you're not. However, this was not always the case. And there are aspects of uh, Jewish life that have lied, lain dormant for many, many centuries that perhaps need to be revived and can be revived with halakhic cogency. It's very interesting that when the Talmud presents the classic state uh, case for how one is to uh, accept candidates for conversion, the candidate for conversion is somebody who comes and says that they wish to become Jewish. The first thing that they're told is, uh, don't you know the Jews today are the William, the Kuvim, are, are uh, in perilous conditions, are pushed around, are uh, in a sorry state, all kinds of problems, exerting by Allah. The first thing to inform the person is, are you prepared to be part of the Jewish people, knowing what the Jewish people's condition is? Now sometimes this is kind of almost funny in a way, when some rabbi in a suburban community in his five million dollar synagogue is telling a, a potential convert, you know, that to be a Jew means to be persecuted. But nonetheless, still people have to know that if you're going to be Jewish today, your children are more likely to be subject to terrorist attack. Uh, it's still not uh, so out of the realm of possibility. But the interesting thing about that text in the Talmud is that it says that after the person has been told this, this what it means to be part of the Jewish people, to be, I think, what perhaps the late Rabbi Soloveitchik or Rabbi Faracha called Brit Goral, that is being part of the lot of the Jewish people in history, the Talmud says, Im Omer Eini Kedai Mekablin Otomiyad. It says if the person says, well, I'm really not worthy of being part of the Jewish people, it's, 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 it, but nonetheless, I want to be part of the Jewish people, even though I feel inadequate uh, in part of the, being a member of this people. Nonetheless, that person is to be accepted immediately. And then, accepted immediately means that there's an automatic you get a kind of an introductory course to Judaism, some of the easier precepts, some of the harder precepts, and then the person goes through, if it's a man, the uh, circumcision to be law, and then the inversion of the mikvah to be law, and if it's a woman, uh, to be law in the mikvah. Now, this, it, it's not necessarily happens in one day, but nonetheless it's considered to be a very finite kind of process. It means actually that it's a reflection of the fact that in ancient times, conversion, in many cases, was not an instant type of thing. It was not that today, as of today, you are completely Jewish. It was a process. It was a process that at times took a, a several generations even. And therefore, this is the uh, situation that actually, in ancient Israel, it's reflected in the Talmud, that there were statuses of Jews, and some people who were considered to be partial Jews. For example, the Mishnah says, Asar Yosin al that there were 10 different categories of Jews, 10 different political categories of Jews, who returned from Babylonian exile to the land of Israel uh, 70 years after the destruction of the first temple. And it says, for example, Yisraeli, okay, full-fledged, bona fide Jews, Geire, people who were fully converted to, to Judaism, and the Natine, now Natine were the Gibeonites, that's the questions about them, but they seem to have been what was called the Gertoshav. The Gertoshav was a person 
who wanted to live among the Jewish people, uh, and according to the majority opinion, as brought down by the Poskim, this person appeared before a Bet Din, Shoshachaberim, and accepted upon himself or herself the Shavu Mitzvah B'nai Noach, the Seven Commandments of the Sons of Noah, uh, and these are considered the, the basic moral law that Judaism says is, is, is uh, the responsibility of all human beings, but this is a formal type of acceptance, and they gain a status in the Jewish people. And that's an extremely important fact, they gain a status in Jewish people. Now, why don't we have the Gertoshev today? Well, we don't have the Gertoshev today because Gertoshev meant rights of residence in the land of Israel. And at least in the days of the first temple, in order to be a full Jewish citizen, you had to be a member of a tribe. You had to have an, a patrimony, a patrimonial portion in the land, steachuzah. So therefore, if you came in from a non-Jewish background, it was impossible for you, unless after a number of generations with marrying into the Jewish people, for you to become a full-fledged Jew. So therefore, the Talmud does say that the Gertoshad as an institution disappeared uh, after the destruction of the first temple. However, we know that in the days of the second temple, there were people that were called Yireh Hashem, the fears of the Lord, people who were somehow coming into the Jewish people in a sort of partial way, and whether this was a process that they eventually would become full Jews or not, but there were clearly different kinds of, of, of status at that point. And therefore, this is something which is the case. And in fact, when Maimonides brings down in one place, talks about the Gertoshav, and he says, what Talmud says, well, you know, this is something that happened a long time ago. We can't have it until we're, all the tribes are, you know, when the Messiah comes and all the tribes are back on, on the land of Israel. But the Rav Vad, Rabbi Abraham and David of Poskier, points out, he says, well, yes, that's not necessarily the case. If these people really give up Avodah Zarah, give up idolatry, and want to be part of the Jewish people in this quasi sort of way. He said, then we really can't accept them. They could even live in the land of Israel. They could even own property in the land of Israel. Uh, and this is an opinion, it's uh, the opinion of the Ravad, but it's a very important opinion and a very good precedent for us to look at this situation. So what I'm proposing basically, and, and for, for those who are interested, uh, I've discussed it in two books of mine. One, the, the image of the non-Jew in Judaism, second edition, Lippmann Library. And out my newest book, which is called Zionism and Judaism, A New Theory, I have a whole chapter on a non-Jew being a member, a citizen of a Jewish state. Uh, so if you're interested in the full arguments and whatever. But I think that this is something we need to revive. And I think it's something we need to revive to deal with a number of different categories of people. Number one, and this is something which is especially pertains to the land of Israel. You have thousands of people living in Israel today who by halakha criteria are not Jewish. By halakha criteria they're not Jewish, but they do not consider themselves to be goyim. They do not consider themselves to be Gentiles. Some of them at great risk to their lives and, and, and property have come to the land of Israel. And not all of them, some of them are married to Jews, some of them are not married to Jews, or were married to Jews under non-Jewish auspices. And the question is, what does one do with these people? There have been points of view that there should be, you know, very quick conversions, and that's been questioned. But I think that for these people, this would be a situation where they could be eased into Judaism by giving an identity which would give them a quasi-Jewish identity, uh, which would mean that they're somewhere, uh, to use the Yiddish expression, mitten and trennen, someplace in between. And that in-between status could be one that, for all intents and purposes, was, was permanent. But there's also an opinion in the Talmud, it's a minority opinion, it's not brought down by the post scheme, but nonetheless, it's possible. Rabbi Yochanan says that basically, that Gertoshev, Shavarolav, Yud Beit Chodesh, Blomal, Harayu Kaminagoyim that a Gertoshav, this resident alien, if you will, is somebody of which after 12 months is not accepted full circumcision, which would mean full, becoming fully Jewish, then they are considered just to be an ordinary Gentile. And therefore, this could be worked out. It doesn't have to necessarily be 12 months. It could be some kind of situation where there's a transitional period where people are transitioned into full Jewish identity. And I think that that would take the burden of, now you've got to accept the whole thing now, uh, and it's, your, it's either all or nothing. I think there's some place there in between. 
And this also, there are people in the uh, diaspora, outside Hutzlaretz, who also consider themselves somehow or other to be part of the Jewish people. And I'm only talking about non-Jews married to Jews. That's a whole different question. I'm not saying that this could possibly uh, authorize this kind of marriage. But people who are kind of working their way into Judaism, uh, uh, even if they're living outside of the land of Israel. And the last group of people, and I'm just throwing this out as a suggestion. I'm not, this is not a psak din. If you want to read psak din, you can get one of my shuvot uh, that are being uh, handed out uh, now. But there's a whole group of people who today really fit the category of the Yireh Hashem, the fears of the Lord. These are the people, I've, I've heard Rabbi Riskin speak of it, he's spoken of it in Toronto, of the thousands of people who come to the wall on Sukkot, sharing the loving Christians. Now these are people who somehow or other, and I remember a, a, a Christian Zionist telling me, she said, I consider myself, and she used the Bible English, a sojourner in the gate. A gertosha, a sojourner in the gate. Now here again, the halakhic details have to be worked out. But it's interesting to that there are Jews who somehow or other want to consider themselves to be Jews but still as Christians. I'm talking about Messianic Jews or Jews for Jesus or what's happening. This is another factor of these people who really consider themselves somehow or other to have a permanent connection to the Jewish people. And when people say to me, oh well because they're interested in converting Jews or uh, you know, they think this is going to bring uh, you know, uh, Jesus to come back and whatever. No, the reason these people are biblical people. These are people who are based in the Bible. And many of the Christian uh, Zionists, evan uh, evangelical Christians, everybody's told them, oh there's the Bible, you know it's not true, it's not literal, don't take it literally. Well the Bible says that God's going to bring the Jewish people back to the land of Israel. Guess what? God's doing it. And therefore, I think that this is also something where we could clearly recognize that there are people who have, we might call, associate membership in the Jewish people. So this is something that I think that we need to revive in one way or another. The halakhic details, of course, have to be worked out. This is not uh, a, a, a halakhic opinion. But I think it begins many innovations. And I talk about innovations that are justified, not innovations that are uh, unjustified. But I think this could be an un a justified innovation. And I think it requires the type of thinking uh, of the Jewish situation of how to, as Rav Cook said, to make uh, the old come alive and become new again. And this I know, and without making them in any way responsible for my views, but I've seen this in the work of Rabbi Angel, I've seen this in the work of Rabbi Riskin, this type of thinking, uh, which means that, believe it or not, there are thousands of people out there who some of them want to become full members of the Jewish people, and I think that we should facilitate that and not uh, simply look upon them with suspicion. And there are some people who want a kind of associate membership, and I think there's precedent for it in the tradition with the institution of the Artoshav and Mimhera Bimenu. I hope in some way or other we can revive it. Thank you.